What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Talking Brit. I'm so glad to be here with you all today. Glad that you've tuned in once again. You don't have anything else to do, so you know you might as well. Um, today I have an artist in the well, not necessarily the kitchen. I know I usually say I'm in the kitchen with whoever, but uh, we are in our own respective places uh, due to the Rona or the panoramic as people have been calling it. <laughs> and, um, I have Angelica London with me. Yay! I'm such a fan of yours, Angelica. Uh, we met at a show that I hosted actually, um, even though we went to the same school, that was right. the first place that we met. So Angelica, tell us who you are and what you do. Hi everybody, my name is Angelica London. I am a visual artist based in Chicago and also an art teacher in lovely Inglewood on the south side of Chicago. Um, so I am so happy to be here um, and to share my story and, and my background with you all. Um, I have been a visual artist pretty much all of my life in some form or fashion. Um, I went to Columbia College, Chicago. <laughs> And I, my major was uh, art and design, but really a lot of my art experience happened way after college. Um, my story kind of starts with um, my last semester in school. I took a semester off, so I wasn't in school, didn't have a job. So I'm like, okay, I got to find some way to make money. I had just pledged Delta Sigma Theta the uh, year before. So I'm like, okay, I built connections from that. And people started asking me to paint Greek paintings for them. I did uh, murals in some friends' houses from that time. So that's really the beginning of where my art business started. And it's kind of just I'd like to say it's it's grown up from then. Yes, absolutely. Now I was reading on your site that you actually kind of started making jewelry too. So yeah, was that the started, beginning process? Yeah, I I mean like old school jewelry. So it started okay. with a, a little plastic box with uh, <laughs> with friendship bracelets and things. Yes, um, and that one actually was the the first business I ever had, which ironically I called Jelly's Jewels. My nickname is Jelly. Oh, um, and so in that college year, um, mm -hmm. my my last semester, that business I still carried on the name. So Jelly's Jewels was what people knew me for um, at the beginning, which is hilarious to think wow. about now. Yeah, um, yeah my, my background did start with jewelry, not not just friendship bracelets, it did grow up from there, <laughs> but it does kind of creep into my paintings. My paintings are um, mixed media. A lot of them showcase some uh, recreations of jewelry using semi-precious stones and wood and just lots of different materials to recreate those. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so I want to talk about the live painting, like live painters are just they blow my mind because how do you do it in that length of time and it comes out amazing like did you have to train yourself to be able to paint in that amount of time or is that just the way that your mind works no i definitely had to train myself it takes a lot of practice i am nervous to this day every time i do it and i've done countless events where i'm painting live um, I did have to shift my style. So on a typical painting moment, I'm spending more time. I'm like more meticulous about things, but my live painting style is much quicker and more free um, with my hand. It's less like structured. So I had to change my style a bit, still get nervous, still got to have a glass of wine there before I start like every, I've been fortunate that the events I do are like for big nonprofit organizations. They got open bar. But yeah walk on over get my wine then I'm ready to start so yeah oh my gosh yeah that will be no way like I'm I can the best I'm gonna give you is hangman or something <laughs> right. <laughs> same same right it took, it took practice to get a little above hangman <laughs> right right okay so you also have a residency how had, did you yeah. so do you still have it right at the no, it was last year. It was last okay. November. Um, okay. Yeah, it was a um, every month they changed the artist in residence. So it was for the Wonder Museum here in Chicago. Um, and it was great. It was a great experience. I um, mine was the entire month of November in 2019. And I had just crazy experiences. I paint primarily black women and children. And mm -hmm. the Wonder Museum is a non brown and black 
majority place. And right. so a lot of the people that were coming up were so intrigued by the images I was creating, got a lot of questions, got a lot of looks. Um, and then the black people, black and brown people that came up were like, that's what's up. Like, this is yeah. what needs to be shown here. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved every moment of it. I didn't feel that I was out of place. I always strive to present those images in wherever space I'm in, um, because it's beautiful and everyone deserves to see those those images. And so I, I love the moments as a teacher. <clears throat> I love the moments when the kids came up like, I love her hair, like talking about the yeah. braids and like just identifying the beauty in what I'm painting, um, even though it doesn't isn't, it isn't of an image that looks like them. Right. And I think that that's important, especially for children and especially uh, little little black and brown children to see themselves portrayed in a museum. Because I remember going right. to museums when I was a kid. And like, I mean, right now I'm at my mom's house. So I still have a little ballerina above my bed. But I, want, I was a dancer when I was little, but it's a little white girl ballerina. And we mm. don't, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it just wasn't as readily available. So. Oh yeah. You know what's funny when you when you just said that made me think. So I I too was a dancer growing up, and I had a ballerina poster in my room, but it was a ballerina poster of their feet. And so let's say it was like five little girls. Four of them had their ballet ballet shoes, and the fifth girl had combat boots on. So <laughs> even though it didn't necessarily show change in color and race and, and culture, it highlighted be different, like and be proud of that. And so that was in my room growing up. Um, and I, and I kind of carry that, I guess, internally as, as so many years down the line. Yeah. Yep. Um, so let's talk about that. You're a teacher. You teach, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, kindergarten to first grade, right? To second grade. Yeah. My school is new. So we just, um, opened a couple years ago. So we're just K through two right now, but I've taught older years, um, before. Okay which was a horrible experience. <laughs> really? Oh my God. Middle, middle school is the worst. I taught <laughs> fifth and sixth grade art and I wanted to jump out the window every day. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know those kids, like by the time kids get to sixth grade, I feel like they got their mind made up and it's like... It was intense. I absolutely love my kids, like the kids mm -hmm. themselves, but in the classroom and the structure and that school had never had art ever. Um, wow. So a lot of the kids, it was like, you know, it was like kindergarten, first grade all over again. Like you have to show them how to conduct themselves in the art room. Um, and those classes were an hour and a half long. You can't even do that in college. Like oh hour and a half for, for fifth grader to sit. No um, way. Yeah, so it was, it was intense. So I love my little babies um, with our 30 minute or 45 minute classes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, we have been through a lot this past year and um i know that i see a lot of posts by teachers talking about how they have to constantly encourage um their kids to keep pushing and just like at this point just turn something in so can you talk about like maybe the shift that you've seen in children in the children that you teach or overall um as a teacher since before the pandemic and now during teaching because you teach virtually right yes yeah so have you seen a big shift in like uh their attitudes or you know their um, not completely but i think what we have to deal with right now is the school was a safe space and mm -hmm. now unfortunately they're stuck at home with the people that they may not have felt safe with um and if they did feel safe with with them which is a wonderful thing if they did there's other stuff going on. We're all dealing with stuff. And now they're stuck in the house okay. with the stuff. Mm -hmm. And myself included, I actually had this kind of meltdown the other day. I'm like, I am here all day, all every day. day. Yeah. And I'm, I'm at work here. I'm at artwork here. I'm at sleeping here. And I no know escape. there's no escape. And I know that my kids feel the exact same way. So I can't fault them. So in addition to being their art teacher, I'm also a reading teacher. So I teach okay. reading for first, first graders and I have two groups um, in the morning. And I can't fault them for wanting to lay down while we're, you know, teaching. I, I can't fault them for having 
you know, there are other siblings that are also in virtual school in the room next to them and they're also loud. So right. I can say like, go to another room. They, they ain't got no other room. <laughs> right. So <Yeah. laughs> it's, it's been, it's been difficult because I didn't really realize as much how much the school building is so important. Um, yeah. And, and this more than ever has, has really made that clear for me that we need that escape. As much as I've gotten comfortable with being here, um, I can't mm -hmm. lie. Like if we do go back into the building, there's going to be a moment to exhale um, because finally I'm getting that break and the kids are getting that break from what they are stuck with at home. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then you said that the first school that you taught it, they didn't even have an art program. Yeah, they didn't. And I, I feel bad because, um, so it's actually the school I used to teach in is in the same building. So one side oh, okay. is the middle school and one side is the primary school. So I, I still see them. Schools. Yes. So mm -hmm. I still uh, see them when we were in the building. And yeah, they had never had art before me. And then when I left, they didn't replace me. So what I did was end up, I end up doing an um, after school program for middle school in addition to me teaching on the primary side, just because I felt bad and I'm like, I'm gone. I, I did have some kids that were genuinely in love with art. So I'm like, let me make something for them. Um, as of right now, I don't know what they have. I don't think they have anything art related during this um, virtual learning life, but mm -hmm. yeah, they had never, most of them had never even had an art class. Right, and people don't think that art is essential to children. And I, I mean, I find that hard to believe because that was kind of like my mental escape. Like, and it still is, even though like I'm an artist, I'm an actress, but like doing things with my hands, like still right. I'm in the kitchen when I'm stressed out because like I love to bake. So some form of art I think is essential to their development and their mental escape. Definitely. How do you think that that will change them not having that in their curriculum? What I did find that when I was teaching middle school, the, the kids that did get it, like get the, the because, uh, you know, you get the, they're so mouthy at that age. They're like, well, you don't need no art. I'm not going to be an artist. <laughs> like you get those kids, but then you also get the kids that understand that it's relaxing they find comfort in it they understand like i did a oh my favorite even the, the the hardest toughest students like caved with this unit i did mandalas and you know if anyone knows what mandalas are it's like a middle eastern art where it's all about taking your time so they drew mandalas and we listened to like calming music that was like the best thing ever yeah. <laughs> and so i think with them not having that maybe they're not able to understand good coping mechanisms um, mm -hmm. because they might feel stressed at home there's no outlet and it's really unfortunate I really hope that they are finding something on the primary side we're really big and I love it we're really big on uh, mindfulness so we do um, calm classroom which is a whole program where we teach the kids how to breathe how to calm themselves how to like we do breathing exercises every single day every every day there's some aspect of calm classroom and I feel like more schools should have that um, at especially you know middle school high school like those are the times where they really need de-escalation tactics mm -hmm. to, to really get them in the right space so right I'm because hoping, I mean even at work like if you work in corporate America or wherever like you get at least 30 minutes to an hour to just do whatever and right you have these class classes stacked on top of each other and then plus there's no recess like right. it's hard you know it's really hard and my my kids are fortunate to have so we have dance art and music okay so they have those three options for outlets uh, which is really great but yeah there it's back to I couldn't imagine being a kid right now I really no. couldn't I couldn't. You got to deal with technological issues, like your internet's not act, uh, acting right, but then your teacher doesn't know that, so she's yelling at you for not logging in. <laughs> right. So, yeah. All these things that are out of your control, like I, I really do commend our students right now. Yeah, I do too. And thank you to the teachers because, I mean, I. And the parents, I can't and, lie. Like, yeah. They are really, we're all sacrificing a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, like, there's people that are pro 
teachers during this time and people that are pro-parents. I think we all go hand in hand. There's times where I feel like parents can do more, but you can only do what you can do. And if you are feeling burnt out because you've never been a teacher, you never wanted to be a teacher, but now you're forced to be, um, I, I can only imagine that that's a lot to handle. So we all are going through it. So kudos to teachers, kudos to parents, kudos to students. We're mm -hmm. pushing through. Yes, we are. Speaking yeah. of pushing through, you came up with something that I think is really dope. And um, I call it painting in a panty, but that's not what you call it. <laughs> When I read that, I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the name of this episode, guys. It's called Painting in a Penny with Angelica <laughs> London. Hope you like it. Um, <laughs> so lit kit art boxes. Like, I be seeing you posting about this, and I'm like, when I give me a couple dollars, I'm going to have to join. I'm going to have to give me a subscription or something. So tell us about this escape room that you created for us. Yeah. So I can start from the beginning. So if you want to talk about pivoting, this is the, the prime example. So um, what's your why? My <laughs> why. My why is money. My <laughs> <laughs> I know that's <laughs> right. <laughs> For real. So, <laughs> that's a large, that's a large why. Yeah. But um, no, I so a part of my visual art business was sip and paints. That was a, a branch of what I did. So I would bring all the supplies to people's homes or a venue and set up and we paint and sip and I instruct. Mm -hmm. Of course, COVID hit. Couldn't do that. You can't be in person. You can't do all those things. Yeah. So in April, I decided um, my birthday is April 27th. So the first um, sip and paint party was at the end of April, April 30th, I believe it was. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this for my birthday. So yeah. um, I decided to do virtual sip and paints. It started on Instagram Live and Facebook Live. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was called Wind Down Wednesday and it was every Wednesday. Um, just until I wanted to. So that was great, had a um, pretty good turnout. And the turnout was so good that I ended up um, moving it onto Zoom. So in combination with Wind Down Wednesday were um, kits. So I created a kit called a lit kit that has all the supplies that you need for the paint session and I mailed it to you for the events. So I would take orders for Wind Down Wednesdays, ship them out, I'd be at the post office every, <laughs> every other day. They know me wow. I'm going to the post office after this. <laughs> and um, I, yeah, just kind of blew up from there. So from that, then I got corporate private parties for paint parties. Um, and then I was like, man, okay, I got something here. Let me turn this into a subscription. Mm -hmm. We all have subscriptions. We got Netflix. We got some yeah. people are in wine clubs, meat clubs, mm -hmm. like <laughs> the most random subscriptions you can think yeah. of, most people have. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, there's a niche here. Um, there are some art boxes, but there's none like mine. Um, one because that sounds that sounds like it. No, like I like that. That did. Sound good. <laughs> I, I'm gonna put that in the caption. You've had art boxes, but not like hers. Oh yeah, t-shirt <laughs> next. Right t -shirt. there, you go. <laughs> <laughs> so the yeah, the other boxes are not acrylic paint boxes. They're all watercolor. They're all like random art supplies. They're all drawing related. Like that, I was really the only one that had acrylic paint step by step instructions. So. We're in the trademark phase. Um, the the um, <laughs> trademark is, is in up up in the higher Me ups too. in the offices. Yo, yeah. gosh, that takes forever. <laughs> yes, it does. Like six months. <laughs> yeah, literally. I think I've got, maybe got two months left, so I'm waiting. Oh. But um, but it's yeah. So I I started the subscription. Um, the subscription subscription box is just been a fabulous um, reception because the original lit kit box, I've t sold over 2,100 boxes. No, I'm sorry, oh. overstepping, 1,200 <laughs> boxes, so 1,200, still a lot. Yes. Um, and, and, and counting and growing as, as we speak, I have tons of parties in December. So it's been fabulous. And the subscription box is something that you can do on your own, in your own time. You do get a link to a live session taught by me, uh, which happens, during Wind Down Wednesday, and which is now once uh, once a month at the first Wednesday of every month. So yeah, it's been great. Like actually one of my um, customers last night started, finally opened up her November box and she's been working on it. She sent me pictures. Like I love the fact that you can just do it whenever. There's no yeah. rush. There's like whenever you're getting a creative burst for people that have kids, whenever, you know, you just need some mommy or daddy time, like some yeah. me time you can step aside and, and get that done. So 
it's been a really great journey with that. Um, lots of subscribers right now and, and growing. So. so what kind of like, besides the paint, like what are some of the other things that are in the lit kit? Yes. So in the box comes there, oh, there's three boxes. There's a kid's box, there's a deluxe and a basic box. So the deluxe and basic box are geared toward 21 and up um, just because of the themes that I do. So like the first box we did was wine themed and um, eventually there'll be, well, not eventually now, um, there are coupons for wine companies. And so I just, you know, want to be age appropriate. And then the kids box is from age six to 18. And it, that can shift around based on what you think your kids' abil abilities are. Like I have some people that are like, my kid's four, but very creatively savvy. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah, some kids so in, the box, uh, in the kids box comes two images that are step-by-step -step, um, how to create the image and then one pre-sketched image for them to paint. And it comes with all the art supplies that they need for that. So in the kids box, I also include a little surprise every month um, that comes in there. The deluxe and basic box. Yeah, you know, a little toy, yeah. a little something. So um, in the deluxe and basic box, same thing, three, three images. Um, this December, I will give a little spoiler. This December okay. for the December box, I put four images because the theme is holiday. So I want to oh. represent all the holidays that there are um, during this time. So I put four canvases in this box um, along with some surprise things. So the basic one does not come with surprises. The basic one is the same every month. So you okay. get the three images that are new every month with the theme, but the supplies that are inside are going to be the same. The paint, the brushes, the, you know, things like that are going to be consistent. So it's been great. I'm, I get excited about it. Like Black Friday for me was a Vistaprint sale, <laughs> um, buying <laughs> stickers and pluggers to go inside the box. So that's awesome. That's awesome. And you can subscribe to any or all of those. The yeah, you can subscribe the... to any of them. Um, I have different month um, uh, limits, so time limits. So, and, and the other thing is that just like Netflix, you can, well, you can't skip a month on Netflix. <laughs> you can no. just cancel it. <laughs> so you can cancel it if you want. I highly doubt you'll want to. Or right. you can even skip a month. So I do month to month. I do three month um, pre-purchase, six month. Pre prepaid in a year. I just added recently. So you can do that. You can give it as a gift. Um, so you can even give a gift, uh, a gifting three month, which I've gotten a lot of for December. So you can stop the subscription because obviously it's not for you. It's for someone else, but you can prepay for them for three months in advance. So it's a, it's a fun, fun thing. We, we, we have a ball. Wind Down Wednesday is a ball. We always have a live, live DJ. We we have. See, a that's the one. Like that's that's gonna get the party jumping. The live DJ. Like that's yeah. so, so is the DJ like in the Zoom call and? Yeah, he's in the Zoom call with us. Um, DJ B Man. He's a Chicago based DJ, but he's DJ for celebrities, Chance the Rapper, um, multiple people. He's been on the Shy. <laughs> he was on an episode, uh, like I think the first season. So. Yeah, I uh, I love B Man in my future wedding. He'll be my DJ. He's just so <laughs> awesome. But uh, yeah, I we love have the this collaboration time. of artists that's been happening during this time. Like, yes, and I'm everything in my box is black owned. So okay. I'm sourcing from a black owned um, art supplier. Um, it's a, a lady based in Chicago. So most of my supplies come from her. Like probably eighty five percent of them. And then the wine company is black owned, and they're in the Bay Area. So I've paired with them for um, for inf information and like different sales and things um, through them. So yeah, I'm I'm trying to make this blackity black, but also <laughs> all inclusive because um, my box just gear is, is is tailored towards everyone, and I've had like really great reception from a multitude of people from all walks of life. Well, them sales gonna go off in February. I'm gonna tell you that now. Black History Month, they are gonna go off. So uh -huh. tell us where we can hit you up and order some of these boxes. Yes, so Lit Kit Art Box um, has a website, litkitartbox.com. It'll take you to um, where I host my boxes called Crate Joy, that's the website. But you can just go straight to Lit Kit Art Box and it'll just send you right there. Um, gives you information about that. Also, you can uh, find out more about me and the private sip and paint parties. Um, my Instagram is color me Delta, D-E-L-T-A on Instagram. Um, as well as the Instagram for Lit Kit Art Box is Lit Kit Art Box. Um, but 
on my art page, you can find out about what paintings I'm working on, which has slowed down a little bit because everything else is just <laughs> on top of my plate. But I'm working on some things. I'm working on some things. I just haven't recorded them. Um, but yeah, Color Me Delta, Lit Kit Art Box, both of those Instagrams, um, both of those tags on Instagram, and then um, alondonart.com to learn more about my art, and litkitartbox.com to learn more about the boxes. Wonderful. And are you taking orders for original paintings? Because I have one. I wish I was at my house because I have a print that's from right, you. You do. That's in like if y'all watch my videos on Instagram, you'll see it in the background. And I love it. I try to get that in the background. That's my favorite wall in my apartment. <laughs> yes, so I go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, go ahead. And I am taking commissions. December is a little tricky. So catch me for January. I actually had someone hit me up yesterday for a Mother's Day commission. So the earlier, the better. Um, definitely, you know, the quality is going to be super high if I have more time to complete it. Um, and I also want to make it special for you if it's for a special someone. So um, yeah, the earlier, the better. December uh -uh, on commissions, but <laughs> January, February, and so on, I got you. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Well, Angelica, thank you so much for being here. Before you get out of here, we're going to play a little game that I like to call Finish That Sentence. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so we just talked about how you throw these lit kit art boxes parties. I want to know how lit is you? <laughs> so <laughs> you got to finish that sentence. And I feel like you will know the answers. I have. I am very confident in you. <laughs> we around the same age, and I know that you like to. You go out, right? Well, I do. I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You go out, and you know you like to kick it. So, I am confident that you'll be able to finish these sentences. Okay. So, if you get it wrong, you're gonna hear an ant, and it's just oh, just me saying ant. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Finish this sentence. Bands will make her dance. Hey. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> okay. Number two. This is a this might be kind of hard because I'm going way back with this one. Okay. Mike Jones number on back then didn't want me now I'm, now I'm hot they all on me was so this was my like voicemail uh music in the background song yes. uh 310804 was it almost the, i don't remember the area code yeah i remember the area code something something 310804 Hit my toes up, what was it? You can ant me. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> well, two eight one three three zero oh, eight zero zero four. Oh, okay, <laughs> got it. Locked and loaded in the memory. Lock, you got to lock that back in. You never know when. That's one of those ones though that you don't. Well, no, that's a lie because people do remember it. But for me, I feel like it would have been. Uh, triggered once the song was playing. I'm like, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like when you in the middle of the dance floor. Two, right. Two, four, three, three, oh. Yeah, I always keep that on deck just in case. <laughs> I want to call Mike Jones one day, see how he doing. I mean, we've all called that number. I know yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Last one goes back to your background in teaching. Okay. Not necessarily a song, but to get the kids' attention, and I used to be a teacher too. I don't know if you did this with your kids, but finish this sentence. One, two, three. Eyes on me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use that one, but I know that one. <laughs> yeah, so I was a toddler teacher, so I had to, you know, like them two and three year olds, one, two eyes on you. <laughs> I'm up here. Come on. Circle time. <laughs> My favorite is uh uh that we do dun, 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 and then they Yes. Like, <laughs> or like we will put the lights off and like uh lights off heads down. It's it's a whole Yes. Thing. The um what was that game we used to play? Heads up, seven up. Seven up, yeah. My favorite. <laughs> um middle schoolers love that game. I was like, I thought that was too young, but they they loved it. They liked it. 
yeah yeah that takes me back man i I know (laughs) then you would put down the thumb of the kid that you liked in the class like (laughs) it was a whole pre-dating moment yes yes it was okay angelica well thank you so much for coming and talking some grit with me i had so much fun with you y'all follow angelica on all social platforms all the things all the things um so we can find you one more time yes Tell so my personal art question. page is color me delta okay. my uh, lit kid art box page is lit kid art box on instagram and then for my website alondonart.com or litkitartbox.com okay all right well i'll put that at the bottom of the screen so y'all don't have to be writing it down real fast with a pen and paper like you used to write down numbers y'all kids don't know nothing (laughs) about writing down numbers taking pen and paper to the mall y'all don't know nothing about that (laughs) okay angelica well thank you so much um those of you who are listening thank you for listening in i hope you have a good night evening morning whatever time it is that you're listening see you soon bye